Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We have been here before, and uh, we've been through a lot of provisions of this bill, but I want to highlight a number of things. First of all, I want to note that this is a no-smoke bill, no self-grow, and it takes a bona fide relationship between the client, the patient, and the doctor, or the nurse practitioner. It has to have an uh, in-site visit for the first visit, and after that it can be telehealth like we do with uh, other situations. If a doctor or a um, nurse practitioner is going to be um, in, the, it, in, the, in this and, and making um, recommendations, they have to request authorization to do so by the Kentucky Board of Medical Licensure and the Kentucky, or the Kentucky Board of Nursing. So not just every person who's a doc or a uh, nurse practitioner can, um, can do this. They have to have follow-up care and they have to have continuing education. Also, uh, no doctor can be involved in owning a business that is involved in uh, this, um, this medical cannabis uh, situation. They can't be a cultivator, they can't be a safety tester, they can't be a processor or a dispensary. What else does it do, Mr. Speaker? What it does is it sets up four categories of businesses. Um, it says, first of all, that we're gonna have uh, licensed Kentucky cultivators. Uh, has to be grown indoors, that's, that's the growers, it has to be grown indoors, and they're licensed in Kentucky have to be approved and so forth by the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. Also, there has to be a licensed Kentucky processor. So they take the materials and they make the product, um, and that has to be also licensed. It has to go through the proper um, protocols to make sure that they're approved. They have to be, proper to, they have to be properly capitalized. They have to have um, background checks and so forth and so on. Also, the same is true with the licensed Kentucky dispensaries. All these folks have to be approved by the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. There's also a fourth one, and that is the uh, safety compliance facility, and there can be no ownership that is the same from one of the processors or the dispensaries and the safety testers. We want to make sure that that is kept, kept separate. All of the time, every time that, that someone has access to this, uh, the medical cannabis, it is logged in CASPER. CASPER, obviously, is, is one that, uh, uh, a system that we trust, that we put uh, medications through, and so uh, who has access to that, obviously, are the regulating bodies and law enforcement to make sure that everyone is operating as they ought to. Law enforcement, one of the things I like to say is that these facilities are, uh, the lights are bright and the cops have the keys. Law enforcement can at any time go into these facilities. Uh, in most facilities, if you have a business, they have to have a search warrant or a reason to go in. In this facility, if you are getting a license, you waive that right, just like you do if you, are, if you have a liquor license in Kentucky. So law enforcement can come in at any time and check, check all your books, check all your products. They can even check the, uh, the personal effects of the, of, the, um, of the tellers if they're there. So they have full authority to make sure that everyone is doing what they need to be doing. You know, minors cannot go into the dispensaries. Uh, with respect to minors, though, they have to have a caregiver, a parent, or legal guardian um, um, have access to this, uh, this medication for them. No child can possess, no child can purchase, obviously. They can't even go into the dispensaries. And so if they are being, being given this medication, it has to be from a caregiver, a parent, or a legal guardian. And if a child is going to have access to this, not only does their own doctor, who they have to have a bona fide relationship, have to, has to approve it, it has to be a secondary doctor as well to make sure when we're talking about our children that, we're make, that we really get it, we have more, than, um, more steps to make sure that we, that we get it right and that we protect everything. There is a local opt-out, and so if a particular county doesn't want, uh, want this in their counties, the fiscal court can vote to opt out that particular area. There are very limited conditions, five conditions. Um, and uh, the, the conditions can be increased by the Kentucky Center for Cannabis, which is what this body uh, and the Senate passed uh, last, last year with the lady from Kenton and her bill to, uh, to study, the, uh, study the product. Um, and so uh, if, if they have a study that shows that it might help Parkinson's or Crohn's disease or, or whatever, then they can add that uh, condition, that qualifying condition. It goes into effect on January 1st, 2025, and I think that's an important thing because what that does is it gives the executive branch the opportunity uh, to make all their uh, administrative regulations. We can be, a, a pro be in that process and oversee that and, and watch that, and then the executive branch uh, can prepare everything, the licensing, making sure that everything is up and running before uh, it becomes effective. So we want to make sure that we go slow and deliberate and get this thing right, and it will be in effect on in January of 2025. I also want to note, as I've made a commitment um, to many others, I'm going to make the commitment on the floor today, 
This bill says that if uh, a child is in school, that the school will come up with a plan, the school districts will come up with a plan uh, to administer the medication to the child. The bill right now has the same um, um, ability uh, as any other medication, so the school nurse would be presumably the one that would administer the, uh, the medication if the, if the caregiver wouldn't come to school and do that. I'm fine with that, but there's been a lot of pushback on that, so I'm making the commitment here today, um, and I've talked to the sponsor of, uh, of the bill in the Senate, and we're going to come back in January and make sure that, that part of the plan, and I think this is already in the bill, but we're going to make it crystal clear, that the school district's plan can include the outright ban or outright um, prohibition on any employee, school employee, including a school nurse, from administering this medication. So in that case, if that happened, the child would have to have the uh, medication administered uh, by a caregiver. Um, and so we'll make that change. We'll, we'll come and, and I'll be sponsoring that bill or Senator Westwell, one or the other, and make that change in January. We'll also obviously watch the administrative process as this uh, unfolds to make sure that everything is in order. With that, Mr. Speaker, I move passage of Senate Bill 47.